during the 16 Days of Action 2022 campaign. Gosa Girls on Fire and Tech Shack Tactical TV interview ordinary but outstanding women. Hashtag I am every woman. woman. In our interviews, we honor outstanding businesswomen who have made a difference in their specific sphere of society to ladies who have overcome horrific gender-based violence incidences. We, we believe, believe in action, action, not activism. Why are women continually cast as helpless victims? Bystanders to their own fate, presuming that victimhood is a fait accompli. We are not simply dear in the headlights of gender-based violence. We can and will stand up for ourselves. We are not second-class citizens who need special days and men standing up for us. We, we say, say no, no more. more. Activism does not change the minds of predators. Predators will always be predators, waiting in the dark to claim their victims. Standing on street corners with placards saying that we are against gender-based violence has and never alone make a difference. Take, Take action, action now, now not to be a victim and, and be, be a, a strong, strong woman. woman. Do, Do not put your trust in anybody else except yourself. Take the example from the strong women in these interviews and, and be, be a, a warrior. warrior. Hashtag victim no longer. Lynette Oxley here for Tech Shack Tactical TV and Go Sir Girls on Fire for our 16 days of action. I'm here with a very old friend, Bianca <laughs> Bell, and we're at Kalari Arms. Welcome, back, Bianca. Thank you very much. Tell me a little bit, let's start. Who is Bianca Bell? Oh, um, difficult one. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> complex. Um, you know what? I'm the same as every other girl on the street. I've, I've been lucky enough to be involved in... Um, shooting sports and I had a family that was involved in firearms so I got a little bit of retros a little bit of uh, information and, and interest from that side but there's nothing spectacular or different about me I work a normal job I go home take my shoes off like everybody else and at the end of the day it's I am every woman that's, as our slogan that's it. it is, but um, you are exceptional uh, in a lot of ways. When did you start shooting? We met each other, yes, that was a long time ago, many years, <laughs> many years yeah. ago. Um, how did you get involved? We were both involved in SAPA, yeah. South African Defence of Pistol Association. So I started shooting when I joined the police 23 years ago um, as a reservist. Um, and obviously firearm handling is part and parcel of that job. And about 10 years, yeah, about 10, 15 years ago, um, I was approached to shoot for the, the Gauteng's uh, police team. And as they say, the bug bit. It always and does, I start, it? it? does. <laughs> and uh, I started shooting on a, on a more um, private time scale, and that's where I got involved with the SADPA guys. And haven't looked back. Absolutely love it. So in terms of... The police, are you still involved? I am, I am still a reservist. Um, on a much smaller scale, work has taken a preference at the moment, so, um, but yeah, we still do We still do our shifts and we're still out there to help people, when, especially during this time. You're still quite involved, I think um, you were involved with uh, gender-based violence uh, through the so. police and also with animals, if I'm correct. Yep, yeah, we do a lot of um, the, the anti-pit bull fighting, um, a lot of uh, meet and greets with women, kids, who are a little bit nervous to approach the police on stuff. We want to be able to put a more approachable face to something that should be there to protect them, but not a lot of people feel that way. And we'd like to change that perception. Fantastic. So this year, um, you won our Fighting Spirit Award, Krista Swart Fighting Spirit Award, if I yep. can say that correctly. <laughs> um, and you got first prize. Uh, one of the, the sponsors from the site really uh, we're behind your story and I'm going to ask you to tell the story now, sure. but I haven't actually given you a certificate <laughs> and uh, let you. us show us the show the viewers what you won um, This year very spoiled very nice. Oops. Oops. Thank you. So any case tell us What your story is because that was a, a, a very interesting story so I I used to be in the property industry and before I got involved with firearms and um, never carried a gun for self-defense. It wasn't really a, an issue at that stage. And one evening decided to go and meet up with a friend of mine for dinner. We'd been out, came back to, to their house and literally sitting on the couch, not a care in the world. And next thing we looked up and there was a suspect standing in the middle of the lounge with a gun pointed at her head and a balaclava on his face telling us to be quiet. 
45 minutes later, after taking all of our jewelry and rings, um, something changed. He kept asking where the owner of the home's um, security car is, and, and he wanted to speak to the gentleman of the house, and he wasn't there. It was just the two of us girls. And the moment he realized that he really wasn't there, something shifted. And he suddenly grabbed my friend by the throat. And, and she's a small lady. Literally. She is literally shoulder height to me, petite little Indian lady. And uh, listen, she, she will bite your head off given the chance. But at that moment, he was a good foot and a half taller than I was. So she was minuscule compared to him. And he, he grabbed her hard and, and demanded to be taken to the bedroom. And at that stage, I knew it was either going to be... And he'd never taken the gun off of her. He had that gun pointed at her the whole time. And we eventually walked down the corridor, and I deliberately broke, effectively, the door handle to the bedroom downstairs. And I said to him, I'm sorry, I can't open the door now. And he started getting really frustrated. And as he pushed her out the way, uh, my anger kicked in. And, uh, yeah, I tackled him. I hit him with absolutely everything I was worth. And Injured yourself in the process? I did. Uh, what felt like a five-hour fight was probably a 55-second fight, but we managed to throw ourselves all over that house. Um, by the time I threw him out the front door, and I threw him out the front door. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, didn't realize it was a glass door, though. I could have died still. But I think we were both such in shock about what had just happened. He bolted that way, I bolted that way, and that was it. But... Um, the next day I realized how much I'd actually damaged myself. I'd, I'd pretty much broken my back and had to go in for surgeries and they said to me I'm never going to shoot sport again, I'm probably never going to ride horses again uh, and I'm definitely not going to be as physically active as I used to be. And that they wasn't, were wrong. They were very wrong. And um, yeah, here we are. I always say to people you never know if he actually got his way, would he have stopped raping you guys? Would he have stopped? It. Would he have killed you then? Um, so you have to fight with everything you have, and you do that. Um, well, we found out after the time that um, he's actually been sought for 160 cases, ranging from robbery to sexual assault and to murder. murder. Oh, excuse me, and murder. Um, he literally walked up to someone in their lounge and put two holes in the guy's chest. He had no remorse. There was something extremely cold and calculating about this gentleman. I use that word loosely. Um, yes. uh, I do not doubt for a second that he, he would have done grievous, grievous, grievous bodily harm. And that's it. You have to fight, fight back and you 100%. That's why you got this award. Do you think this award is good? We give it a, on a yearly basis. Do you think... I, that I you think that it's example? one of those things that... Crime has become such a blasé topic in this country. And, oh, well, you survived it. Okay, well, at least you didn't die is pretty much the response that most people have. And that sickens me. It, it shouldn't does. be that way. No, you're right. You shouldn't have to go, well, at least he didn't rape you. That's not the point. This shouldn't be a problem. The problem is, is that it's become such an arbitrary discussion. Most people don't talk about it anymore. People are starting to become way too accepting of the fact that it's it's not if it happens, it's when. Yeah. And instead of standing up and going, well, I've survived this, people just keep quiet. That oh, I had a home invasion. That's it. It is. You know, we have become very bizarre yeah, about it, it and it's, everybody it's knows somebody that's had a home invasion. I've 100%. had a home invasion. Yeah. Um, two armed guys, uh, both uh, bulletproof vests. Mm. Um, Yes, and we survived it and we fought them off and um, yes, um, one of the guys got shot, uh, he got away, but I don't think he survived it, but mm. we're very blasé about it. We are. And it's, it's uh, yeah, I don't know, it's a sick society that we, uh, we live in. This event changed my way of thinking yeah. in two very, very large things. Yeah. Number one, I, if she'd be there by herself or if it had been someone else that had been there with her, I don't for a second think that she would either would have sustained severe injuries, probably would have been raped, actually probably very definitely, and may very well be dead. Okay. Um, I was very lucky that for the years of my police work, 
it trained me in certain things, and that was the literally the only thing that got us through it. If I'd had a firearm on me, it would have been a very different discussion. Very different discussion. It would not have led to the trauma that it led to for, for her and for I, and it may have just, we don't know what's Cut happened. It Cut. It Stop ended, the, ended the, the issue. issue. And may have saved numerous other victims after us. We don't know how many other victims he's had. What happened? You don't know? We don't he's, know. He's, he's, he's They're still trying to trace him. And, it's, and they've literally got another 60 odd cases against him that they've pulled his DNA off scenes. How many other people does he have to hurt before he comes to an end? So my question is, do you think it's uh, worth there's something from my side is, do you think by standing on the street corner saying, please don't attack us, or men saying, I'm not going to attack you, because it's not those guys no. that standing up and talking about it that is actually the problem. Those guys are not going to change. Anything, the only way is going to either be in jail or dead. That's the only way that they're going to change that situation. You're not going to change them by talking to them. Those kind of mentality, or the, the mentality in those kind of people, is not one of, I need help. Help me be a better man. That's not who they are. No. The guys who are prepared to talk about it and who discuss it and who discourage it and are very vehemently against it are not, not the, the problem. problem. Exactly. And generally, their friends group is not the problem. The problem is the group that is isolated, doesn't believe in anything anyone else says, and in, honestly, to me, is not changeable by general public. So the only way that we can change is about changing ourselves um, as women to, to fight for our, uh, for our rights and uh, to stand up for ourselves. It's very simple. If, if I'm armed and you're armed and someone walks into a room and goes, well, I'm going to try and attack one of the two. I know one of them. Even if just one of us is armed, are you prepared to take a 50-50 chance? And for me, that's how it should be for them going forward. It's not about us feeling victimized. I want it to be a situation where people must, you must, a criminal must walk into a room and go, do I feel lucky am I going to hit the jackpot and choose the person who's not trained, whether it's a knife or a gun or whatever it is, am I going to risk my life to try and do something evil or do I walk away? Because that perception already creates a Let safer environment. Let, Let him twice. have to think twice about how he's going to leave the house. Not us. It's, he's the one perpetuating the crime. We're the ones who should feel safe, and the only people who are going to make us feel safe is ourselves. Is ourselves. Absolutely. Last thing, you've just become a partner in this gun shop. I have. It's a, it's a big thing. Um, you're, you know, it's good for us as ladies to do things in the firearm industry. Yeah. You've completed the um, Glock Armors I course. I did. And you were absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Take, taken it apart and uh, put it back together beforehand. So, yeah. Um, how do you feel working in this industry? It's actually not as bad as people think. No, not at all. And, I, and I, to me, it's one of the most inclusive industries I've ever worked in. Mm. Um, n no one cares whether you are black, white, pickled pink, whatever. It's if you're here for the right intention, everybody will be there to help you with it. Yeah. If it's... Most people think that people that own firearms are aggressive. Um, super aggro towards spouses um, and generally the kind of person you don't want to run into a, into like a, a traffic altercation that's not the case not. firearm owners generally are the most calm the most relaxed and because they understand that there are serious repercussions Absolutely. to their actions owning a firearm most we do a lot of training here with women and, and men who come in who've been on the receiving end of a violent scenario they come here to re-empower themselves to go back out into the world and be productive. Um, owning a firearm is not about the ability to end an argument, it's about the ability to defend yourself should the argument go too far. And you avoid, avoid, avoid. 100%. And, and that's basically it. 100%. A gun is, as Paul, um, my husband always says, it's just an aid memoir, saying it's, it's there, you, you know, as absolutely last resort, mm -hmm. you, can, you are able to defend yourself. But yeah, um, if that person walked into your uh, ha into the house, you were armed and she was armed. It would be a very different it discussion. It would have been a totally different discussion. Different. Messages for other girls on fire out of there and other ladies out there? Oh, girls, go out and do as many courses. Train with as many people. Um, 
go into the gun shops and demand to be heard about what you want to have in those shops to make your life easier in carrying your firearms. Go and speak to the guys and the girls that are out there. There are more and more women getting involved in the industry yep. and we really want to draw that in. We do a lot of um, female based products that the guys are now starting to use because they see how comfortable it is on their ladies. Carrying a firearm doesn't have to be uncomfortable. It's comforting. And it's, you've got to make sure that at the end of the day, carrying this piece of equipment, because that's all this is, this is a piece of equipment, has to work in your favor. And the only way to do that is for you to learn how to carry it. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll My see pleasure. you, hopefully, we'll see you next year at uh, the Top Shop. Definitely. Thank you very much, Bianca. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. I'm a girl on fire, I'm not a victim, I'm a girl on fire, I'll stand my ground, girl on fire, I've made a choice, I stand proud, I'm a girl on fire, I'm a mother, a daughter, a sister, a friend, I'm every woman. I have taken up arms and I choose to defend all that I hold dear. Independent and strong, you will not keep me down, you can't break me. I'm a girl on fire, I'm not a victim, I'm a girl on fire, I'll stand my ground. Girl on fire, I've made a choice, I stand proud. Countless hours on the range, I am responsibly armed, I am your equal. I've empowered myself, I have practiced and trained, fear won't control me. With my sisters in arms, we will make ourselves heard, we'll stand together. I'm a girl on fire. My ground, girl on fire. I've made a choice. I stand proud. I'm a girl on fire. Show.